Crafting the perfect leather product. Leather has a timeless appeal. It eludes elegance, durability, and style. It's a material that has been used for centuries, and its versatility makes it perfect for crafting a wide range of products. Whether you're a nature-loving enthusiast or somebody who simply appreciates the versatility and functionality of leather products, here at Log Cabin Leather by Jan, I've got you covered. If you don't know who I am, my name is Jan Hibbard, and I've been making handmade leather goods now for 46 years. Uh, today, I'm going to take you a little bit through the process of how I select leathers, the different types of leathers, uh, how I prepare the leather for working on it, how I, you know, cutting and sewing, finishing touches, and a little bit of the care and maintenance. Basically, I'm just going to, you know, touch on these topics. I will be creating videos every week. So if you want to find more about how I make my particular products, then please subscribe to my channel. Always a thumbs up would help if you're watching this Facebook. Again, follow my page, like my posts. That would really help. So in any event, let's get right to it. Selecting the right kind of leathers. Leather, there are a million different types of leather. There's different types of tannages. There's different thicknesses, different weights different size pieces. Now, unlike buying something made of cloth, you can buy the size piece pretty much you need, you want. Not true with leather. You're either buying large pieces. I mean, again, it comes in sections, but they're basically a cow hide. You can buy a full side, which is the entire hide from the cow, which is huge. You can buy a half a hide, you know, you can buy different pieces. Leather also comes in very many different thicknesses. And there's different types of leather. There's full grain leather, which is primarily what I use. Full grain leather is basically the skin of the animal with the hair removed. And then it's tanned. So it does have some scars in it at times, but it gives you the most versatile, versatile, durable leather you can get. So, And then it can be thinned down by cutting off the underside of it to make it different thicknesses. So depending on what you what I'm making, you want different thicknesses. So I'll go into that a little bit. So full grain leather, that's what it is. It's basically, it is the whole hide. Top grain leather, they shave off the top layer of the skin to remove some of the scars and so forth. Because again, an animal is going to have some scars and scratches on its skin. Um, so that helps you move some of the imperfections. It has a cleaner look. It's not quite as good a quality, however, though. So really the, the uh, full grain is the best. And then there's, you can also get genuine leather. That might be like your suede's and things like that. And that's basically, they've cut off the skin. It's kind of like the middle thickness of the hide. So again, leather comes in all different thicknesses. Now the thinnest leather I use is again, see so it comes in ounces, is about three, four ounce. Pretty thin. Um, four, five is again, for a lot of my smaller projects, jewelry, earrings, home decor, I'm using this type of leather. For carvings and so forth, I would like something a little thicker because I want it to have some depth to it if I'm um, carving like a nature scene or something on leather. Uh, and so it's the thickness this way. This is what I'm showing you now is also called vegetable tan leather. There's different tanning processes. Vegetable tan leather is primarily what I use. It is tanned with natural products like bark, vegetable products. Oak is a, is a primary tanning agent because the tannin in acorns is used to tan leather. And so it is a natural, biodegradable, eco-friendly type of leather. Now, again, for my smaller projects and things that I'm going to paint on, it's a natural color. Again, belts, I use that kind of leather, except now it is much, much thicker. I don't know if you can see the difference between that, you know, and this. And, and so this is where, for different products, there's all different types of leather. And so, and because you're buying big pieces of it, it's expensive. <laughs> so in my quest, I'm narrowing down a little bit on the type of products I make. In the past, I made wallets and things like that, but that's thinner leathers, different types of leather. So that's really not things I'm doing much anymore because that's not a type of leather that I want to buy large quantities of. 
Um, again, the vegetable tan leather is primarily what I'm using now. It is used for my belts, my hand tooled belts, but also my solid color belts. Now this is still the same leather, except it is dyed at the factory, which gives it a more uniform color and so forth. I will be having other videos about, again, how I color and so forth. And you can probably find some older versions of those, <laughs> probably not very good um, as well. As my lighting is still not my greatest yet. Is that a little brighter? I'm not sure. All right. So again, different types of leather. Suede is again, is again genuine leather, but it's it's the inside part. They're cutting, so it has a fuzziness and cutting the smooth. They're not smoothing, the, you know, top layer down. Things like that. So there's all different types of leather. Once you've picked your type of leather. You need to, you know, you're going to cut it. You're going to prepare it. Um, depends on what you're doing. Again, it can have scars on it. So depending on the project, some people like the rustic look of scars in it. If there's a big scar or something, or a lot of, if it's cowhide, it has a brand mark in it. You know, you cut that, cut around that and don't use that. So you have to look at the hide. Next, you're going to... Um, clean it if it needs to. If you're going to put designs on it, it's going to be wet with water. I don't do a lot of other cleaning to the leather because most of the leathers I buy are nice and clean to begin with. So it doesn't really need a lot of pre-cleaning. It depends on what you buy. Sometimes in all honesty, I love to see in the basement. So if it sits around or, you know, Sometimes it does need to be cleaned if it got a little mildew or something on it from sitting. And that is easily cleaned up with conditioners. I use, um, I can't even remember the, um, I can't even remember the name of it now. Um, once you've got the pad, you've cut your piece of leather, you've found the type of leather you're going to use and the thickness you want for the project. And like I said, that's where there's a million different kinds of leather. So I'm narrowing down a little bit and not doing too much with the real thin leathers because I prefer to make the belts and, and the products from this other type of leather. So once you have that, you have to trace it onto the leather, again, trying to avoid those scars and stuff and getting the best part of the hide. Like I said, depending on what you're doing, sometimes within the same hide, it's a little thicker in places than others. So if you want the more rugged part, you know, you might consider that when you're cutting. So there's a lot, lot to learn about cutting the leather and so forth. There's different methods for cutting. I have scissors that I cut with. I have exacto knives I cut with. I use a rotary cutter on this mat I have here on the table. And so, you know, so it doesn't tell the tools. So all the tools are used on top of this uh, mat I have on the table. And then to cut real intricate shapes like my little butterflies and so forth, I have a machine that will cut these for me. I have to create and draw the pattern but it can cut these fine little details, which is no way you could cut that in thick leather. Because again, you make one snip in the wrong place, it's there, it's permanent. So leather is a little bit unforgiving that way. So you, you know, you need to be careful when you're cutting things. And you, you know, I use a steel square and things like that when you're, you know, cutting out shapes. But if I'm cutting, like this is a shape for a barrette or something that's cut by hand. So if I snip too far into the corner, see, it's going to leave a mark. So, you know, you have to be very careful. So tracing and cutting is probably one of the most difficult things. Um, most of the products I'm doing now, I'm not sewing. I do have an industrial sewing machine for sewing products. You can also sew by hand. Again, that's labor intensive and depending on what you're making, obviously adds to the cost of an item because you are making it that much larger. Excuse me. I, sorry for the little chaos there. Uh, we had a, a roller, you know, a pavement roller come up the driveway or whatever they're working on our street down here. So that interrupted the video a little bit. So I apologize for that. In any event, I was talking about cutting and sewing leather. Most of my products now, again, are not sewn. That, I think, is also another reason that make my belts a little bit better. They're not sewn together. They are one thick piece of leather. They don't need to be sewn together. They're rugged. They're durable. They're going to last. 
So again, when I do sew things, I have a sewing machine sewing by hand. Again, it takes a lot more time. I have lots of projects that I have sewn. Again, this is a combination. This piece is sewn on by machine, and then the sides of this were sewn by hand. So, you know, there's all different sewing techniques. Again, I'm not going into those or anything, because again, there aren't too many products right now that I'm actually sewing at the current time. So again, different ways of sewing them. Again, I'm going to have different videos where I go into more detail behind the scenes, actually showing the making of a product. Today, I'm just kind of highlighting the different aspects and different steps that go into making handmade leather products. So sewing it. Once it's sewn, then it needs to be finished. And this is where it really makes a difference, I think, in particular on belts. Now, the edges of my belts are beveled and burnished. I don't know if you're going to be able to see the difference. <laughs> this isn't just a belt strip. The edges are sharp, square. See how thick that piece of leather is? Um, so heavy. This, the edges are rounded now, which makes a belt more comfortable. They're also smoothed off. You don't see the rough fibers like you do on this. So that also is part of this again i'm having probably caught i'm having trouble recording here so i apologize for that my videos and things are wigging out on me so again edging burnishing finishes the edges smoothing them off makes a much nicer product so on things like belts the edges are smooth nicely you know something like this the edges are smooth enough trying to make it almost look like it's one piece of leather when it's done that's so, how you finish them and you make them, you know, look nice. Uh, I can also customize things. So I'm just going to briefly touch on that. Belts, again, I can put initials on, guitar straps. It's a little bit hard to do it once I have a finished product. It's not something I can do on the fly. But again, certain things I can engrave on. It's a, an option I could do after the product is finished. Beforehand, I can be stamped, tooled, carved, things like that. So guitar straps, belts, I do a lot of custom work there. Some book covers and so forth where people want a particular design on it. Those are all things I, I, I can do. You know, I'm going to discuss it with you. I'm not going to say yes right away. I'm going to look at the project and give you an honest opinion whether I think I can do it. For example, if you were asking me to carve a picture of your pet dog, I'm not going to capture the details of their face and stuff in all honesty, I'm better at doing scenes and, you know, some animals, but not personalities, I guess I could say, um, things like that. So now the last thing I'm going to discuss today is cleaning and conditioning. Leather really is a pretty durable material. It will last forever. I have some things. And again, all my things are packed in my van because I'm heading to a show this weekend. And that's why a lot of times I don't have things available to show you because it's too much work for me to carry them in and out of my basement to my van. I'm not young anymore, and my boxes of, of leather things are very heavy. So it's challenging. So I don't have them all here. But again, you don't need a lot of conditioning things. I have a leather vest. I've had it for years. Um, you do not have to. Sorry. I stopped recording again. I'm not sure what the deal is here. Maybe I don't have enough space. Uh, it doesn't require a lot of care. You can use, oh, what is it called? I can't Saddle soap. Saddle soap is what I use to clean a lot of my things. So now, like, for example, this is an old belt. This is actually not even a belt I made. This was something I had from when I was a teenager. But if you noticed, it is kind of in rough shape. If I take the saddle soap, I'm going to put it on a, a wool rag and rub it on this. It is going to return this to the natural state. The worst thing for leather is to really have it, like, like wear a belt in the water and then, you know, let it dry. Doing that a lot is going to really dry out the leather. Obviously, obviously sitting in a very damp place um, in a basement, you know, the cement, it, it absorbs moisture from that. So that's, I think, what happened here. But it's easily to clean up. And this can be restored and it can look like new again. 
It just takes a little bit of time. So that's another reason why leather is such a durable, versatile, useful, functional material, because you can make so many different things with it. You can, you know, again, things like this, I'm molding the leather. You can see it kind of has slight dimension to it. It's not flat, flat, like it was when it was originally cut. You can, you know, you can mold it, you can shape it, you can stamp it. I have other videos about coloring it and so forth and the techniques I use. But, the you know, the worst thing is to store it in a damp place and, you know, water, really. So crafting the perfect leather product is really an art form, creating my handmade products and my unique designs, because these, again, are all my own original tool designs, um, really makes them pop and makes them stand out from other leather workers out there. All my patterns are created by me. My designs are all my own originals. Again, if you ask me to do a particular custom product, I can do that, or I will work with you to see if I think it's something I can do. Uh, so leather is really the perfect material, I think, to make things out of. Again, and the longevity of it is amazing. So that's going to wrap things up for now. I apologize for the glitches that happened during this and the dog that's barking upstairs because of the piece of equipment that rolled up our driveway. So thank you very much, everybody. Have a great day. Bye.